welcome each one of you to the five-day faculty development program on the topic team-based learning and evidence-based active learning strategy. This FDP is an initiative by the Directorate of Higher Education and Goa State Higher Education Council in line with the objectives of the new education national education policy 2020. We at DHE and GSHEC are working rigorously to provide exposure to new tech teaching pedagogies to our faculty members. We are positive that this FDP will help the participating faculty to design, develop, and implement TBN modules in their own academic discipline. With this context, I now request Shri Prasad Lohikar, IAS, Director, Director of Directorate of Higher Education and Executive Director of Goa State Higher Education Council to kindly welcome the gathering. Friends, Directorate of Higher Education and uh, Goa State Higher Education Council is now continuously organizing various FDPs, faculty development program for implementation or effective implementation of NEPs. Present FDP is one of them. We have with us Professor Biju, who is visiting chair professor at IIT Bombay. And we are fortunate enough to have him with us for this faculty development program. In fact, this will this faculty development program will be only for five days, but then we will have him continuously for uh, various different program, uh, which we are in the process of formulating. Everybody knows that what are the contents of new education policy. India was having education policy right from 1968 uh, uh, onwards or there was one policy uh, after 85, 86 then. Not that this policy is first policy. However, first time any education policy is talking about quality education. And when we say quality education, it starts from framing of syllabus, then teaching methodologies, evaluation, and all other things. Question here is whether we are imparting knowledge or we are giving just information to the student. What is the difference between knowledge and information? In simple words, I would say, we can say anything is knowledge only when student can use his information into practice. <coughs> Then comes framing of syllabus. How we are framing our syllabus? Is it as per the market needs or is it as per the needs of the hour or needs of the time? Or we frame syllabus uh, in a way that how comfortable we are in teaching those concepts or teaching that syllabus. So we have seen in many uh, subjects that Syllabus are framed in such a way that first thing POS thinks in their mind that how comfortable faculty members are in teaching their syllabus. And in the bargain what we are doing that we are not making student employable or in fact that whatever skill is required to be inculcated in the student, we don't achieve that level. Then again, when comes it comes to evaluation, what we are doing? We are testing the memory of the student. We are not testing knowledge of the student. So that is why what we have done. So in the name of continual assessment, what we are doing? We are again doing same thing. Continual assessment means what we are doing. We are conducting two ISAs in between term examination, but it is the same thing. What we are doing, it's a short term memory we are testing, long term memory we are testing. So that is why such type of FTBs are required. And NEP says 
that each college should have a training department. That does not mean that each college should have a BA program. Training department means you that department should check that your faculty members are trained enough to give to impart education in that particular higher education institution. So just two days back, I was telling uh, in my uh, speech, somebody and in fact somebody has asked me that what will be the role of teacher in future because you are talking about uh, digital programs, online programs. So I told him the teacher will remain. Teacher was there, teacher will remain in future. That does not mean that you will remain. Teacher will remain. Who will remain? The person who will prove himself, his or her relevance to the time. So you have to prove your relevance now to the time that we are still relevant. And those who will prove that you are still relevant, only those will remain. That is why we are organizing all such type of FDPs and programs so that you can prove your relevance. But then again, we can only do handholding. It is up to you to prove your relevance. So with this, I would uh, uh, like to welcome our uh, main uh, workshop uh, this uh, uh, teacher and uh, today's guest uh, professor biju and you all for this fdp thank you thank you sir for your wise words may i now request our director shri prasad mulikar to present flowers to the resource person professor biju thankanjan executive director at tech society india I now request Ms. Vandana Nai, the program coordinator of this FDP, to introduce Professor Biju and share her insights and objectives of the faculty development program. Thank you, Kanti. Uh, good morning, all. Respected dignitaries on the days, all the participants of the FDP, and my friends. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce Professor Biju, who is the resource person for this FDP. He has completed BA and MA in Economics from Kerala University as well as an MBA in HR and Marketing from Anna University. He has then completed MS in uh, Communication Technology and Policy and PhD in Instructional Technology from Ohio University, US. His work experience includes Instructional Designer, School of Nursing, Ohio University, Director, Curriculum and Assessment Design and Improvement, Heritage College of Osteopathic Medicine, Ohio University, and then he has worked as visiting faculty at the IT department of IIT Bombay. Currently, he is holding the position of executive director of EdTech Society and a certified trainer in team-based learning. He has several certifications under his belt, project management professional certification and higher education teaching certificate from Howard University's Del Box Center for Teaching and Learning, which are few of them. He has been conferred with several awards and recognitions too. His publication list, list of talks he has given and the grant list are too long and all are associated with prominent journals, conferences and funding agencies. So I'm keeping those keeping in mind the time in hand. However, I would like to surely highlight there that anyone who, who goes through this list will be amazed to see how he has applied his expertise in improving the educational strategies into a wide range of fields, including that of medicine, nursery, uh, nursing, agriculture, engineering, and so on. We hope that this knowledge of his will help all the faculty who have gathered here for this FDP to create a collaborative environment for their students. The objective of this FDP is to learn the dis different aspects of team-based learning and then imbibe them into our day-to-day -day lecture sessions. The lecture and hands-on sessions will help us to understand how to form these teams, impart the conceptual knowledge, and then assess the students. We hope you enjoy the sessions and our hospitality for the next few days here. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for briefing us on introducing Professor Biju and laying down the objectives of this FDP. Uh, today, we are privileged to have amidst us our resource person, Professor for our FDP, Prof. Professor Biju Thankanjan, Executive Director of Tech Society. So, 
May we request you to address the gathering. Thank you for the warm welcome. Thank you for the Department of Higher Education Goa for inviting me uh, for this session. It's my honor and pleasure to be here with you all this morning. You know, whenever I give a talk, I always say that, you know, as a teacher uh, or a resource person, I always want to learn from you, okay? So I will be learning with you next five days, okay? So Sar was telling about the um, role of a teacher. It's changed, right? So we are no longer the information keeper. Do you agree that? Right? So 10, 15 years ago, we were the information keeper, right? So the students comes to your class, you use the textbook, you explain the concept, you explain the principles, right? So you were the only source of information 10, 15 years ago. But now it's changed. So before this lecture on team-based learning, you can easily Google it on YouTube. What is team-based learning? You might find at least 100 YouTube videos that explaining the topic TBL better than me. Then what is the use of me? I am here for next five days. Right, so the information is available already in your fingertips. It's same with your classroom as well. So the role of teacher is changed from the information keeper to a facilitator. So how you facilitate learning? So that we will be exploring with team-based learning next five weeks. Thank you very much. So I look forward to learn from you and thank you once again for uh, for the introduction and the welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I now call upon Professor Vittal Devi to give the vote of thanks. Before giving a formal vote of thanks, I just want to say this is uh, our fourth FDP and what we have gathered from previous FDPs is that uh, uh, <coughs> For new faculty, we have uh, faculty induction programs and such trainings for quite a quite a long time, 17 days, 21 days, and the feedback uh, what we got is really these kind of uh, FDPs uh, have become more effective rather than having 17 days or 21 days. And of course, this will also help for your case uh, because you are the main stakeholders when you go uh, when you go to the classroom and do the actual teaching. Uh, and so we think that this kind of FTPs will be really, really helpful, especially when it comes to and uh, Dr. Biju and director has already set the stage. Uh, unless you prove your relevance to the time, uh, you know, and the role of teachers have really changed for last uh, you know, 10, 15 years. So I really want to thank uh, you uh, for being here. Uh, because you are the main stakeholders and you will take this to your classroom and uh, eventually uh, to the students to improve the quality of higher education in the state. Uh, and uh, thank uh, Professor Biju. He has uh, quite a lot of experience. Uh, he's bringing from Ohio State University, one of the largest universities in the world. Uh, in one campus, Ohio State University has more than 80,000 students. So it's like a jatra after uh, between the classroom uh, sessions. People walk and too much of a rush on the campus. Right? Uh, so he's bringing his experience from Ohio State University, IIT Mumbai, and uh, such organization. So I'm uh, really thankful to him. And we are very fortunate to have him uh, for next few days and we will continue especially uh, when it comes to instructional design. So we are planning uh, another course on instructional design. So we hope to have him uh, here for that same thing. Uh, thanks to our director uh, for pushing us to organize such uh, FDPs and always uh, having that support from DHE to Oscar Higher Education Council. And um, 
our team. I'm, I'm really proud to say that and I make sure I say this for every event that we have quite a dynamic team. It's unlike any government departments you can see. We have quite a dynamic team at DHC, Gwasi Higher Education Council. Uh, wonderful team to work with. Uh, so I work with few teams uh, in India, uh, outside India. And so I'm really fortunate to have uh, such a good team. So big kudos to them. Uh, for having uh, organized this uh, FDP. And finally, uh, the infrastructure that we are using, uh, SCR team. So a big uh, uh, thanks to them. Uh, so I hope uh, that this FDP would be very fruitful. Uh, you will have uh, very interactive sessions and then you will take this to uh, the classroom and then to the students. Thank you. So, so how is everyone? Good? So have you had a good Rest yesterday, good breakfast, good, good. So as I said earlier, so next five days, you know, I want to learn from you as well. So first few minutes, I just want to talk uh, kind of an advertisement about the EdTech Society, okay? So it's not part of the topic, team-based learning or active learning st strategies. Uh, but just briefly talk about a tech society. How many of you heard about a tech society? Anyone? Yes. Yes, Kavita, madam. So I, you know, one of the session I briefly talked about. Um, you know, when I was um, in the um, uh, in the U.S., I was uh, the past president of uh, Association for Educational Communication and Technology (AECT). Okay, if you Google it, AECT, it's one of the uh, oldest educational technology association in the world. Actually, this year, they are celebrating the 100th year. The organization was started in 1923, <laughs> you know, 100 years ago. So this year they are celebrating their 100th anniversary. So the, it's a very old organization and actually most of the educational technology, the textbooks, uh, instructional design textbooks and all those coming from the AECT. So I was part of that organization when I was doing my PhD. My advisor took me to the conference and did a lot of presentations. So then each year, you know, I always look for, is there any representation from India? <laughs> you know, there are organizations like uh, Japanese Educational Technology Association, Taiwanese Educational Technology Association, China Educational Technology Association, but there is no representation from India. And, but we are very good with technology, right? With the software, we are building all this learning management system and all these technologies, but we don't have any representation. There is no way to you know, really help um, uh, the teachers, faculty to use technology in an effective way. So it was really you know, a concern for me. Um, so then I became the president and um, so then there were quite a lot of Indian origin faculties in the U.S. universities. Okay, these, you know, so then I will kind of grab them. Hey, come, let's come together and have a start a conversation. In the dinner, we started talking and then I was asking, do we have any organization? And uh, no, there is nothing in India. So... Um, I uh, sent an email to Professor Sridhar and there is another faculty, Dr. Kinshuk, he is the dean of one of the Texas University. So can we start an organization? And uh, so then at the same time, um, we always wanted to come back, you know, it's always difficult to come back, you know, once you are in very comfortable position and you have a lot of opportunities in front. You know, with two kids, I have 12 year old and a seven year old, then moving back, you know, a lot of questions, but still we really wanted to come back. My wife and I uh, decided uh, to come back. And um, my wife, um, <clears throat> uh, she's, uh, has, she has a PhD in molecular cell biology from Ohio University. And uh, she was doing all the lab work. 
and then uh, we finally decided to move, move back in Maharashtra. I'm from Kerala, uh, one of the rural village, Umarkhed. It's around uh, 70 kilometers away from Nanded. That's the closest air, uh, railway station. And the airport, it's uh, Nagpur, around four and close to five hours drive. And uh, so then, um, and currently I am serving as the executive director of EdTech Society and traveling to different uh, colleges and really um, bringing uh, faculty who are really interested to use technology. So let me briefly talk about EdTech Society. Um, um, so this is the logo and uh, this is kind of the slogan for EdTech Society bringing together education, technology, and community, okay? Education is there, technology is there. How do we bring together as a community? And this is the website, uh, etsociety.org. And uh, uh, so, so there is a membership drive, it's going on. Um, so we do offer um, master classes every month. Actually, next Tuesday, uh, there is a master class on 3D modeling, you know, editing and uh, things like that. So yeah, active learning. Okay, yeah, that was the master class seven. Yeah, master class eight, Blender 3D modeling and animation. So that's coming up next Tuesday. Uh, so uh, you can check out and uh, so who we are, uh, it's a non-profit organization started in India by individuals who are committed to improve instruction, learning to the use of technology. So anyone can join this organization. Okay, higher education faculty, teachers, and trainers. Sometimes whenever I talk, you know, oh, can we join? Yes, of course. You know, so we want to learn from you and this is an opportunity for you to present um, your experience with the public forum. I remember when I was uh, doing one research in Kerala, I went to one of the remote village, uh, village school. That teacher, he was bringing his cell phone into the classroom. And then he played the poems through his cell phone into the class. You know, in the seventh grade and eighth grade, you know, students has to memorize the poem. So what he did, he kind of downloaded the poem from the original author and then he plays with the rhythm because he doesn't know how to sing very well. You know, you know the poem has the rhythm, right? So he was doing that once stu students were really motivated to listen the poem. That was a simple example of using technology in the classroom. So we want to bring rural teachers, faculties, to come together, share your ideas. Um, so bring us a public forum. So that's one of the main goal of this organization. And this, so this is the executive committee, Professor Sridhar Ayer is the president and Sahana Murthy, then Shridanshu Misra, uh, Misra is the uh, uh, technology officer at UNESCO. And then Ram Kumar Rajendra IIT Bombay, Kabil Kadam, Kit, uh, Kit College of Engineering, Jagrishan IIT Madras, Yogendra Pal, Samir, and I am here as the executive director. So, so we want to welcome you all to join in the organization. And uh, um, so, as I said, I think just told okay, you, so these are some of the goals of the organization. Um, and by the way, uh, there is a conference, it's coming up in November 24th, 25th, so it will be updating on our website. It will be in IIT Bombay. And uh, so we will be, the proceedings will be published in a high impact, you know, uh, 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 we have the collaboration with IEEE uh, Explorer. I don't know how many of you know about it. It's a very high impact journal. So all the proceedings will be published in that one. So those who are interested to submit a paper and uh, publish in that one, so you are welcome. So we'll be doing some master classes 
on how to really do a research on educational technology. You know, so, you know, most of you are using some kind of a technology in the classroom, right? How many of you use PowerPoint? I think most of you, 90%, right? So do you use a WhatsApp group to communicate, right? So that's another technology. See, there are different, do you, uh, do you use any learning management system? Yes, right? So there are a lot of data, especially if you are using learning management system. There are tons of data within the learning management system. How many times students clicked? Okay, and instructional material, how many students accessed? All these are data that you can use and present in a meaningful way. Like, you know, then you can go into different discipline like uh, language or English or science, chemistry. You know, each field, that's the data that you can use and present. There will be other teachers who would be interested to know your failures, right? What, was, what were the challenges you had? So this is the opportunity for you. So we will be um, uh, giving some um, training on how to really design an educational technology research. Okay, so please stay tuned for the educational technology, uh, sorry, at Tech Society website. And by the way, uh, if you want to join, uh, this is the time. And uh, so we'll be closing the membership drive for this year soon. And uh, it's still going on. Uh, so the membership fee, it's uh, 1,000 rupees uh, plus tax um, for one year, January to December. And um, then for the students also, they can join. Uh, so that's around 600 rupees. So I took two, three minutes of your time to just to sell their tech society, right? <laughs> Great, any question? I'm yes, I, I can share, or if you go to etsociety.org, I can share in the WhatsApp. Uh, also, so the membership uh, link I can share, uh, so you can join the organization. Any, any questions? Any thoughts, comments? Yeah, actually, it's annual membership now. Uh, so we are in the process of uh, having life membership and uh, institutional membership. Probably the life membership next year because we we want to really organic people. You know, sometimes when we uh, when we start an organization, when we see these high names. People, the organization just to want to join with the 10 or 15 or uh, 50 members. So then it's kind of influence the, the or overall organizational decision. So we want the rural representation from all over India. So we delight that process of institutional membership. But life membership, definitely next year probably will be coming up. Any other questions? You know, so we really want to create some uh, as a member, the first question, that's the question that it asks. It's a very nice question. Usually what we will get, you know, that's the question usually come. As a member, what we will get. But thank you for the question. What are the expectations? So the expectation, you know, um, basically in the other side, actually, we really want to create the value. Like we want to cre really want to help you as a faculty uh, to use the technology. So, but you will have some opportunities uh, to volunteer the organization, like the membership engagement committee, or if you are very good with the uh, social media, or if you are a very good resource person, like if you are an expertise in one particular topic, we might invite you to do a masterclass session uh, on different topics. So, um, yeah. So did I answer the question? Yes. So the expectation from your side, uh, it's kind of low, but we really want to create the value. At the same time, we do uh, want to engage the members in a very meaningful way as well. Very good question. Thank you. Any other questions? Wonderful. Great. So OK, so let's move on. Um, Okay, so, okay, so let me check my, I think the time it's kind of 
going away. Uh, but that's okay. Okay, so I will go, today I will go a little slow. Okay, don't worry about the scheduled timing. And I think whenever the tea break is there, they can stop and you can go and for the lunch time. Okay, so what I want to do, it's um, before I give some talks on active learning strategies, we are going to form a team. Okay, so if you all, um, okay, so let me see the discipline. So those who are arts teachers, can you stand up? Arts stream, arts music, okay. Um, arts English, you know, any, 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 uh, let's say maybe, so the language teachers, okay, so those who are arts, so please take your belongings. Now I am completely, you are going to, into different. Okay, so all those uh, faculty, those who are in art streams, mm, please stand here in this one line, in this side. Or maybe you can take the belongings later once we form the table, you know, that's fine as well. Yeah. So please stand here, all the arts faculty. So please stand a line here. Yeah. Okay. So is there any language teachers, Hindi, English? Okay, so can you go back to that line? So so what subject? Economics. Economics. Geography. 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 Economics. Economics. Psychology. 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 Economics. Economics. Okay. Economics? Yeah. Okay, can you move here? What's Geology. zoology? Sociology. Sociology. Can you come here? What ma'am? Economics, can you move the economics, all the economics? <laughs> economics, okay, we have a lot of economics. Don't ask too many questions to me, okay? <laughs> I forgot a lot of economics. <laughs> okay, so my economics. Sociology. Okay, can you, mom, can you come this side? So all the economics first? Okay. All of you are economics, right? Sociology, okay, good. So language, right? Okay, so all the science teachers, can you stand up? So while I'm doing this team-based learning, this is, it's a demonstration also for you also, okay? How I am doing this team formation for your classroom, okay? So it's a learning process. So, okay, so now all the science teachers, please line up behind them. So what subject do you teach? So, Mathematics. Mathematics. Or I saw some of more mathematics, right? Okay, so all the mathematics comes this one side. Okay, good. So, so what's the subject? Mathematics. mathematics. Maths, maths, maths. Okay. Botany. Botany. Zoology. Zoology. Yeah. Physics. Physics. Yeah. Uh huh, ma'am. What's your uh huh? Phys Geology. What Geology. Zoology. All, all the physics come together. All the zoology, microbiology comes together. Okay, good. So, what's. Okay, can we go line the back? So, like, we are going to make a line, okay, like that. Let's see. Uh -huh. Okay. So. Dentistry. Okay, I will. Um, okay, so medicine. How many medicine? Medicine, pharmacy, only two? Okay, so you can go behind that line. Oh, okay, so as a support. Yeah. Oh, okay, great, wonderful. Thank you very much, thank you. Um, uh, okay, so we have science. So engineering, any engineering faculty? Okay. So all three of you are engineering. Can you move back to that line? Okay. So what? Commerce. Commerce, yes, commerce. Education, yeah. Education, commerce. commerce. Okay, so where are we starting? Okay, let's come, commerce come this. So it's starting science, mathematics. Okay, please, please come commerce up here. And the, um, okay. So all the education, you can go. I, I saw several education. <laughs> no, okay, in the list, okay. So please go behind that one. 
Okay. So, so I, I'm, see, when you use a team-based learning, um, so it's only one time in a semester. First time, if you have the list of students, what background, sometimes see here, it's a subject based. And sometimes in your classroom, like you can create different categories. Look, like, you know, their previous experience, do they have any work experience? You know, all those categories you can create, or you can do this part in an Excel sheet also. Okay, so if you have all the lists, you can create in that Excel sheet as well. But today I just want to show the face-to-face -face physical, so that's why I'm um, doing this way. Okay, so now introduce yourself, tell your name in each in the team, and uh, what's your subject, and uh, so I will be randomly asking you to introduce one of your another colleagues. Okay, so make sure uh, you learn their name and discipline when you close attention to what they are saying. Okay, so just take us a team, just introduce yourself. Maybe take one or two minutes. And so now, you know, uh, you can select a team name as a team. You select a team as a suggestion. Um, so you don't have to use this suggestion. You can select just a suggestion, okay. What are the best fruits in Goa? So you can select one fruit's name as a suggestion, but it's up to you to select a name as well. So while you're doing that one, I want you to create some, at least five norms for the team. Do you know what is norms for the team? Can someone give an example for a norm? So, yes. That everybody will participate in the discussion. Uh-huh. Yes, everyone will participate, okay, yeah. okay. So then speak respectfully, right? Isn't it? So disagreement is okay, right? In order to grow, <laughs> we need disagreement, right? But that's okay. But make sure you do it very professionally, that disagreement, okay? So as a team, create five norms. And you know, you can, so I can give some example, like um, speak respectfully in all conversation and meeting, listen actively and mindfully in your opinion, keep an open mind when sharing ideas or com confronting disagreements. Uh, then, you know, actively listening in involves don't use your phone also <laughs> while the other teammates are discussing, okay. Now, so just take two, three minutes to create five norms for your teams. So usually, you can sign a contract in your students. In, in your classroom, you can make the contract for themselves, for the students, then sign the contract at the beginning of the semester. So these are the norms for this team, and you will sign the contract, so it's done for the whole semester. Okay, so just, just right now you don't have to sign the contract, but just list. And also you can select a team name also, you know, while you're creating the norms. So it's a, as, a, uh, as an assignment to create a team name. Okay? Okay, so good, so at least minimum five norms and a team name. So let's uh, start, those who are done with the norms and name, can I see your hands, your team? Are you done with the team name and norms? Good, good, good. What about this team, got it? Okay, done? Okay, so let's start with this team. So tell your team name and uh, five norms that you have created. Uh, so we have five norms. Okay. Number one, participate actively. 
Two, be punctual. Please listen. Okay. okay. Three, be respectful and humble. Uh -huh. Four, keep communication channels open. And five is to facilitate growth in whatever form it is required. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. So the the fruit name is. It's a local fruit that grows in Bhutan. Okay. So what is the how do you say it's that? It's a wild berry. Kan kanna. 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 Yeah. kanna. Kanna. Okay, Kanna. Okay, great. Kanna. Okay, great. Psalms for the groups are uh, first one is speak professionally, respectfully. Uh -huh. uh, participation from the all the members uh, will be involved. I mean, third one is keep open mind while confronting the disagreement. And fourth one is voting system when there is a disagreement and the majority will win. Uh -huh. And uh, listen actively and mindfully. Okay, listen actively and mindfully. So, you know, I might might take some time to remember the name. Okay, tell me one more. Zuari River. Zuari River. Okay, great. Wonderful. Okay, so team. Kanna Zuari. Okay. What's your team name? Team Synergy. Team Energy? Synergy. Synergy. Okay, great. Great. Okay, okay. So let me ask, you know, in the team-based learning, one thing is always why question. I'm going to ask you, why did you select team name as Synergy? Ah, so based on that, that one. Okay, great. So why did you select the team name? The reason we selected the river, especially for as knowledge, the river flows, that way we thought about knowledge flowing. And as it is, you know, the river flows, the knowledge is the same. So we thought about knowledge flowing and it's the same. Uh -huh. Okay. That is how wonderful, wonderful. Great, great. So I think I heard your explanation. It's a wild flower. <laughs> I'm sorry, wild fruit? Yeah. Yes. Because I think you suggested you could put your name on the fruit. Stick to, yes, the instruction very clear. Yes, local. Wonderful, wonderful. Local name, the government. Good, wonderful. Okay, please. So, mango. Mango. Oh, wow. That's wonderful. So. Everyone will participate. Mutual respect during discussions. Listen actively and openly. Collective decisions and democratic decisions. Democratic decisions. Okay, great. So why did you select mango? This particular variety, Goa is known for it. What is the variety? Mankural. Oh, mankural. So that. Oh, okay. Mankural. So I should try that. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, mankural. Okay, great. Thank you. See. See, in the team-based learning, it's always why question, okay? So whenever, make sure as a team when you make a decision, so I will al always ask for the justification, <laughs> the rational, okay? So we'll come to that later. Okay, please. Uh, sir, team name is team Madhai. 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 M H A D E I. It is uh, it's, uh, a river in Goa. Okay. Originates in Karnatak, but uh, most of it flows in Goa. Okay. Goa part in Maharashtra. Uh -huh. uh, we took this name because right now it's a burning topic for the state of Goa. Okay. The Karnataka government is uh, planning to has already started uh, its process to divert to divert the waters uh -huh. towards uh, their uh -huh. arid region. Uh -huh. And uh, that's going to affect the flora and fauna in Goa. Uh -huh. Okay. We'll take it to. Okay. As a okay. 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 Uh -huh. Uh, our rules are all members should participate in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Second one, uh, all decisions should be unanimous. Mm -hmm. Third one, mutual respect for all opinions. Uh -huh. Fourth one, uh, back statements with evidence to the extent possible. Mm -hmm. And uh, allow the speaker to complete the point before making your own point. Uh -huh. Wonderful. See, wonderful, great. So another learning point. So when you do um, the team names and uh, be very careful about avoid the control, you know, political or religious um, kind of issues because you know, like for example, when I was in the U.S., um, you know, usually the international students will consider us a English as the second language, right? So we kind of feel, you know, the instructor, it's okay, all the English, it's not first language, come to this group, 
you know, we kind of feel, you know, some kind of, a, oh, instead of that one, there are different ways you can, you know, the diversity and the inclusion. So be a little mindful of that one. Okay, and I'm just a learning point, you know, when you, you know, design the team and, um, you know, make sure that also it's locally, you know, how you create the team, you have to take the charge of that one. So, okay, so very good. Um, okay, good. Okay, so are you ready to move with the teams now? Okay, good, good. Okay, so now, yes, any questions? No, 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 that's fine. So if you all agreed, you know, as a team, you know, you know, I'm just, it's a very good, thank you. Sometimes I forget this kind of uh, discussion in the classes, you know, when I give the training. So I think this was a very good yes. learning point as well. So next time I will <laughs> include in my notes. So very good. So no, no worries, you, you can keep it the name. Uh, because sometimes if there is a, Count person from Karnataka, origin there, you know, sometimes they also feel, oh, why, you know, that, that's the reason I kind of did that one, so. Uh, okay. Um, okay, good. Um, so, okay, if you now, what I would like you to do, um, so just go to take your laptop or mobile phone, if you have a Google Classroom downloaded, or uh, just to join the Google Classroom. So I will share the code with you. And there is a pre-test assessment. And this is the uh, class code. Are you familiar? Most of you are familiar with the Google Classroom, right? So go to Google Classroom. And, uh, and the class code is this one. So you can help each other if you have a difficulty. Yes, if, if you see the question, there is a question, right? So go ahead and do the pre-assessment. So I have also shared the Google Classroom link in the WhatsApp group also. Um, and so once you are there, just to go ahead and um, uh, complete the pre-assessment test. So I think I see 21 of you kind of joined 17 students completed. Okay, I got six responses so far. So just take another two, three minutes. Just a simple, you know, in your own words, how do you describe the active learning strategies? Just simply say what you know about active learning strategies. And uh, second question is share your experience with active learning in your own teaching and learning, okay? 13 responses, I see, okay, 53% of you said this active learning strategies, 57 it says, I have basic understanding of the topic but still need some support. So that's what I'm seeing in the survey. And um, okay, so I think I got 23 responses now so far, 24 now, so just, okay, 26, good. Okay, so what I'm seeing is that 65% um, of you said uh, it's very, uh, I have basic understanding of the topic but still need, I, I can see the result now. You know, I was trying to show it in the uh, um, screen but it's okay, I think maybe next session I can show that. 65%, um, okay, 26 and then 26 responses on active learning strategies. Okay, so just briefly uh, talk about, again, another, so we will have a session on team-based learning on facilitation skill, okay? So let's say if it's a large classroom, uh, if the students are talking, don't go close it to, very close to them, okay? So you always go back and stand behind the end of the classroom, and now you talk. <laughs> You understand? So I think active learning needs to be creatively and critically out of the box and also uh, when it comes to students to uh, give them that space to pause or teach or ask a question in the class. So I think that for me is the active learning. Active learning. Okay, good. So, good, good. Yes, madam.
more time for the students to talk and less time for the teacher to talk. OK, very good. Yes? So particularly, uh, subject and uh -huh. so, so they can uh, do it in the room. Wonderful, wonderful. OK, so three from that team. OK, so can I hear from that team? So what's, what's your thoughts on uh, team-based, uh, sorry, um, active learning strategies? So let me, so the second question was, what are your experience with the active learning strategies in your classroom? So if you can take some of you, have you ever done any active learning strategies in your classroom? Just to share, uh, what was your experience? It's okay to share your flopped experience as well. OK, no worries. So you don't say that, you know, my students was very engaged. No, sometimes it's not the case. You know, yes, please. Um, so one of the things that I find to be very effective is uh, group discussions. Uh -huh. So what I do in class is like normally I'll schedule a discussion and form my students beforehand so that they know not to be absent, first of all. Uh -huh. But uh, send material beforehand, send yeah. up a little bit, tell them to do their own reading as well outside what I have sent. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll give them the question beforehand so that they can gear their thoughts towards it. And mm -hmm. the question is never a, it's never a yes or no kind of question. It always has a gray area, mm -hmm. which would require discussion. Uh -huh. And uh, so yeah, so they generally come to class prepared. And as a teacher, I generally don't pitch in. Mm -hmm. I only really, like moderate and facilitate uh -huh. and ask them to ask one another questions. Like, you know, talk to each other and uh -huh. talk to me. Uh -huh. So I find that to be very effective. Wonderful. So let, let, is there any question to Madam? English. English. So any, any implementation questions or anything? You can ask, because she is the expert now. So I'm also learning from her now. Any other questions? So this is your chance to ask the question. She's an ex, you know, she has done the group discussion in the class. You know, it's not very common, right? Yes. So you, yes. What if uh, after class, you know, you give them the material also, the students don't come prepared? How do you So that works. Uh, can I ask you, is this like 
only five phases of like no, no, even, even in general, general. Uh, students part yeah even in general like, if you give them some homework they, they do actually do I generally try time. to give them at least three to five days like give them this notice you know in advance because if you give it to them the night before then it doesn't always work but if they if you give them time they, they come prepared yeah. Government College Santi, we have the MA program in English. Our master's classes are 30 and less, you know. So that kind of a group is, we have 16 in part one, uh, part two and, and 22 in uh, part two. That's enough actually, it's a big enough yet small enough group that I don't need to subdivide them. I don't feel the issue, I don't feel the need to break them up based on, you know, the least categories. But what were your observations like, you know, for example, some of the students who will find that you know, they may be knowing or they may just uh, utter a word or say something, just move their way. But they may not be confident to say that word or the vocabulary, like you know, the pronunciation of that word properly. So they may have like those observations for them. Um, not really, not so much. Sometimes here and there, they are not able to put their thought out properly. So sometimes I allow them to say it in company and then ask them to translate it back for me because as English, I do expect them to communicate in English. But understanding that company is their first language, it's okay, say what you want. As long as I get the point across, you get the point across. And then translate it, say the same thing, but in English. Have you tried this with students? Not yet, ma'am, because my UG classes are very big, so I still haven't figured out how to, like 60 is too much for, you know, a discussion like this. Still haven't figured out how to do that there. Yes. Should you, uh, do you evaluate uh, or they participate without evaluation? Sometimes it's for evaluation, but mostly I don't evaluate because it's up to them, right? If you want to come and contribute, good for you. If you don't want to, that's still your prerogative. You can stay at home if you don't want to come. Wonderful. Great. Thank you. Thank you for great. Wonderful. So we heard about discussion. Okay, so let's hear from this team. How do you describe um, you know, active learning strategies in your own words? And what are your experiences implementing active learning strategies in your classroom? So these were the two questions. I think I answered from outside the classroom. Oh, yes. Think so. But I did answer. Okay. So I think the one point uh, <coughs> I don't know, uh, talking for all of them, is a role play. Role play, okay. Uh, I'm from the engineering background, uh -huh. so uh, role play invol involves a lot of preparation before, so mm -hmm. active learning happened with role play, and a little bit of testing was done on this because uh, when you do uh, explanation with a PowerPoint, uh, especially with technical information, uh, it's only hear and see. So considering the percentage of learning happening with just here and see. But role play helped a lot because there were two types of people. One is those who played the role mm -hmm. and those who were active listeners. Mm -hmm. So uh, a test was done where uh, a particular technical concept was practiced two days before. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, uh, a microcontroller. Mm -hmm. So uh, the entire block diagram of the microcontroller is very difficult to understand if you listen in a classroom. Everyone will nod and understand, but they actually will not understand. Mm -hmm. But when you play a role, all the players who played the role understood it thoroughly well, uh, if at all just explained to them. So a role play was done, and uh, they played the role of every block in the chip and each one communicating with the other as per the timing, timing diagram. Mm. So uh, the technically, uh, when you put, that, uh, put a task for a role, uh, for a chip, mm -hmm. uh, the output has to come on the other side. So they all got to know how it exactly happens through a role play. Mm -hmm. However, the, now the listeners were keenly observing them. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Otherwise, it was me as a teacher would explain. Mm -hmm. And I could do all possible simulations, but they would probably just 
believed to understand, but mm -hmm. they wouldn't. Mm -hmm. Well, the test could have been done before that, mm -hmm. how much they learned through a PowerPoint, and then through a role play. So mm -hmm. Kind of check this out, and mm -hmm. we found that the role plays, players understood it 99% mm -hmm. of the concept, mm -hmm. and the observers has moved from the 65 understanding to almost 85%. Mm -hmm. So how it happened is because one is that their type of people play the role, mm -hmm. so it was a peer, uh, you know, group mm -hmm. teamwork, mm -hmm. and also uh, their language, mm -hmm. uh, not the high five words yes. that they would understand, you know, yes. the basic things. The the uh, <coughs> friends uh, accept anything of each other, mm -hmm. speak. so it's a lot of peer learning, and mm -hmm. uh, through all that, we found out all the questions answered through the active learners mm -hmm. was much higher than the normal classroom and the players played knew it thoroughly, thoroughly well because they practiced it mm -hmm. and they asked each other if you know if we put two and if you want to add two numbers how mm -hmm. would it really come out mm -hmm. which normally would explain on the blackboard or a presentation but mm -hmm. it was much much higher so so i spoke about the pros and cons so wonderful so now you had another active learning strategy role play. So it's now your chance to ask the questions. Please, do you have any questions to uh, implement? Yes, please. Uh, sir, how did you get them to like, uh, understand? Did they understand the concept better, everyone? Uh, you're asking if all understood. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, as I said, uh, to explain the microcontroller, and you know that well, uh, normally I took 50% of the class the other side, 50% this side. Okay, so no choice was done. Anyone was ready to play, they played the role. And it, you, you required time, so after class, everyone had to stay back. And everyone learned after class, which normally otherwise doesn't happen. So what is the question? We found that uh, all the students uh, had improvement in understanding the concept or? Yeah, I, I explained 85% yeah. from 65, so yeah. 20% increase. And here, again, from 65 to 99, 35% increase. Yeah. I'm looking at if my classroom teaching would be 65, because when you give a test, okay. you come to know only 65 people understand from my active learning through simulation and PowerPoint. Role play, through my yeah. experience, but I don't know what the research statistics is, whether it goes up to 99, but it does. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. She's asking from my... Oh, sure, yes. <laughs> yes, please, yeah. Oh, very good question. Yeah, a good question. Uh, uh, what I think it all depends on the theory. What you want to explain? Sir, so, so just repeat that question. Yeah, yeah, so all of that. yeah. yeah. You, you, you repeat, repeat the question. You repeat the question. Uh, my question was how practical. Mic closed. Yeah. My question was how practical it is uh, in a bigger classroom to have a role play kind of an active uh, learning strategy because in a bigger classroom of eighty, what we usually have. Yeah. I don't know where are they going to stand and how many concepts can be covered in a particular semester or term? Yeah, uh, I was aware of this. There are two parts. One is uh, not everything can be played. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So uh, a, a concept like mine, uh, it requires a lot of people to play that role. So, that, But there are areas and times that only three, four people are required to play a role. So uh, if you have this concept of multiple intelligence, which I use, uh, I make sure that I know my students well. Mm -hmm. So I know who are the ones who, who are kinesthetic who would come up and play the role. So I would choose them first, for from a small number to a bigger number. So if you are, if the answer to your question is depend on the concept. If it is a, just a small concept, I don't need to use a whole whole class of fifty percent of the class. And that is just for the sake of it. But if at all, it could be anything uh, based on uh, uh, electric current passing through a, uh, a circuit. I don't require more than three or four people. So, uh, and I would choose people who are kinesthetic because they are my strength. Mm -hmm. The ones who are 
on the lower end of movement, I would not use them because they would make my life more difficult. So I use a kinesthetic. So based on the concept, that's the answer. I would use the word. Okay. So, but in that process, uh, some students who are not very, they are less able, so how do you address them? Yeah, so as I said, I'm moving from a 60% learning to 99 through role players and active, at least I'm moving from 66 to 85. So I'm still learning. I cannot be so ambitious to create 99 in entire class at that point of time. And uh, with role players, people are very excited. There's a lot of less, in, uh, there was, is a lot of involvement happening and every student at this uh, millenniums, I think, like in involvements of their, you know, in classrooms. So, uh, I'm not able to do everyone in every day, but over six months, yes, everyone will play a role. So, you choose, the, you choose who will come. They will yeah. not come. As I said, multiple intelligence is something that I use. I know my students very well. So, I know exactly. So, that's why planning is required. Who's going to play the role? How, when, how much? Uh, the otherwise, I remember, it becomes a drama, the whole classroom becomes so you have to learn to discern how much and how, uh, otherwise all will become a big tamasha, my entire mm -hmm. theory. So okay, one, one as, more, because, yes, go We as elders or we as adults, we need to know to discern. I think that's one more, question. yes. Uh, you said it is a peer learning, you said it, yes. right, sir? But like, you know, to go to see, uh, I'm sorry, sir, like, you know, I don't want to criticize this. Please go ahead. No, no, no. <laughs> Actually, it, it's, it's a, Just see, <laughs> I, I want to set the stage. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. Sir, yeah, we, uh, one second, huh? yeah, like, you know, So we need yeah. the disagreement, <laughs> right? So we don't want all the people, you know, in a professional way. Like, you know, I have a conflict with my wife, right? So conflict management, I did a course on conflict <laughs> management, actually. But to live together, to move forward, we should have the disagreement, right? Otherwise we, okay, yes sir, yes sir, yes sir, no. Right, so it's a learning process. So professionally we can have the disagreement. Please, next four or five days, we'll be doing that, okay? Please go ahead. As yes. sir said, like sir, you said it is a peer teaching, right? But to go to see like, you know, sir, uh, you have uh, selected or chosen the best one to be to the kinesthetic uh, or to, the, to be on the stage or to perform. And the others, they were the, you know, so called, you know, the listeners. Okay, sir? No, so, uh, no, no, I'll answer your question, but what's your question? Sir, uh, so the question, I, I, I was thinking that really if on the stage also there could have been a, you know, the mixture of students, because like, you know, when uh, uh, their peer perform, it is like, you know, this or uh, this is like, otherwise, like, for example, uh, men, okay? Yeah, we learn from the peers in a way like, you know, yeah, the friend of mine, she also has such and such problem, and we also have like you know so, so and the, some problems. Like it is like you know when the when one peer come to know the other, we also have the problem. Then that particular peer also try to improve on. I agree. So yeah. I agree to whatever you said. It's only that uh, a small correction. Uh, I said that we have a smaller team. I'll use the kinesthetic people because it's quicker for them to do the task. But have you noticed? I first spoke about majority of the class being part of a uh, role, role play and based on the content. 50% of the class would be there. I wouldn't have chosen those who are uh, only kinesthetic. It could be someone who's music smart, uh, uh, interpersonal, uh, intrapersonal, those type of people. So there is no selection in terms of only kinesthetic. It is a mixture of all. In fact, in time to come, you'll find those who are, um, you know, uh, who to themselves also will start participating. So my own thing is, know your student well, and that's what someone will know how to utilize them in the right way. Never, I mean, I thought, I, I tried to do what you're saying, but you know, use the, the back benchers who are very quiet, they uh, ran away from it. They didn't attend the class again. So I realized that don't touch them in the initial times, but later on, they themselves said, I want to touch them. Mm -hmm. Good, good, Th thank you. So one, okay, yes, please. It, it's just a small, I agree situation, uh, this role play is a wonderful practice. Uh, maybe the last uh, two weeks okay. itself. Okay. I Do we have another mic, extra mic? No. Yes. yes, 
Um, I had given my students a situational dialogue from role play. Uh, they, only, they really enjoyed the process. The, uh, the feedback that they got, uh, I got was uh, time was the only constraint. Like they would have, uh, if they would appreciate if uh, they get more time to practice or maybe to play. Now I would like to have insights as to how did you manage? Because you said after the class, but insights as to how did you actually? Yeah. Them that. Absolutely brilliant question. <laughs> uh, my class is to, uh, I think colleges end by 132, right? I think work starts after that. So a lot of research happens only after 2 o'clock, not before that. And that's the time, 2 to 5. And the other students, once motivated, would I tell them to go home. They would not want to go home. So then I understood learning happens after class. Majority stayed back. They practice, they wanted to be perfect. Yes. And they are those types. So we just have to, we need to be facilitators to push them to do it. So I think the answer is, but not before 1, 1 30, but after lunch. Mm -hmm. Everyone sit together, we all have lunch together, and we all work together. So, and, and another answer to that is, can role players cannot be held every time. No. Right, so time constraint, keeping the syllabus uh, on, on so areas or topics that can be played a role, uh, I need to design my script well mm -hmm. and not just tell them to what you want. <laughs> so I think a lot of work happens from the faculty point of view. So. One, wonderful. Th thank you. I, actually, we heard from discussion-based approach and the role play. I was thinking maybe I will give you an assignment. Each team kind of create a best practice. Maybe the Department of Higher Education can create a best practices. And the frequently asked questions, you know, we could not answer all these questions, right? How do you manage? How do you implement? What are the topics, you know? So maybe we can, that's another project that uh, we can do. Okay, so let me hear from your experience from this table. Share your experience about active learning strategies and any active learning strategies that you have done in your classrooms. Um, since I'm teaching in a commerce college, uh, so we have topics related to banking, capital markets, and we have optional subjects also, like Indian capital markets, banking, etc. So we use a lot of uh, guest lectures, uh, case studies, and some participative learning uh, techniques. Uh -huh. uh, two of them I would in particular like to share. Uh, there was this scam of Punjab National Bank, and uh, we gave uh, uh, this as a part of the second ISA to the first year banking students. Mm -hmm. It was uh, for one division because uh, you cannot have it for a large group. What we did is uh, we voluntarily asked the first year students to make a presentation of what they understood from what is the Punjab National Bank scam. And then uh, we should thank our principal, uh, Principal Pende. Uh, he invited uh, the branch manager of Punjab National Bank uh, of Panjim branch, mm -hmm. and he made him, uh, uh, we invited him to the college, and the students gave a presentation in front of him. Mm -hmm. And after the presentations, uh, the bank manager actually uh, gave a feedback to the students. Mm -hmm. And then he also gave, uh, uh, deeper insights into what went wrong with mm -hmm. the bank and how did the fraud uh, came up. Mm -hmm. Another instance was for our TY become students who are studying human resource management. Uh, they have a topic uh, called as uh, HR policies mm -hmm. in the corporate sector in particular. Uh, but uh, uh, as you know, I mean we all know that our syllabuses are uh, very conventional. And uh, today the HR policies which actually the corporates follow are totally different. So we again invited HR managers, uh, HR heads from uh, the nearby industrial estates, uh, the companies located near our college, uh, near in Farmagudi. And uh, our TY students made presentations on the HR policies and theories which are there in the syllabus. Mm -hmm. And then the uh, actual HR managers were asked to give a feedback and then they told how different it is in reality and uh, uh, the syllabus actually needs to be changed and they gave a give good feedback to the students, teachers as well as the principal. So that's another very good uh, practice under participative learning and students learnt a lot. Mm. And we asked the students voluntarily, whoever wanted to uh, give a presentation could come. So we had a few, five or six students came up. 
another uh, model of uh, you can say participative learning we follow is we call uh, uh, faculty from uh, who are experts in the field of capital market and they come and give talks uh, to students after we finish a topic in capital markets. Mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, because that subject uh, students learn in second year as well as mm -hmm. the third year. Mm -hmm. uh, we have called uh, share brokers, stock brokers because many of our students are involved in share trading mm -hmm. surprisingly and during mm -hmm. the pandemic we saw many of the TY students make earn money also mm -hmm. through share trading. Mm -hmm. We just uh, sparked off some, uh, I mean the uh, the topics sparked off some interest in mm -hmm. them and uh, we have students who uh, WhatsApp us and say, ma'am mm -hmm. we are doing trading and that's really brilliant, mm -hmm. they've made it a career, mm -hmm. they've made it a uh, livelihood mm -hmm. after their BCom. So it's uh, really good. Mm -hmm. And another strategy we use is quizzes, mm -hmm. uh, at least I use personally. Mm -hmm. I have a tie up uh, with a Chennai based NGO kind of organization called SRAF. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 Dr. T. N. Gopal, mm -hmm. he is a, he runs this uh, institute and he every year has a quiz, Know Your Economy, mm -hmm. which we have for the TY students. Mm -hmm. And I actually ask the TY students, was this actually uh, useful to them? They say yes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them have cleared the GUART exam and MBA and banking entrance mm -hmm. exams after answering this test. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a positive outcome. And mm -hmm. uh, I uh, intend continuing these practices. Wonderful, wonderful. So, so the what are the active learning strategies that we heard? Can Quizzes. participatory learning then? Quizzes. Quizzes then? Yes. Case study, right? So three, three type of learning. Any questions quickly to these strategies? Anyone has any questions? What's the follow up of these? of assessment also and uh, we ask the students, we take a feedback, do you, would you like to have such sessions even in the next semester or do, what did you learn? We ask them a feedback and uh, those who are really interested then take up careers in banking, they join for coaching classes in banking etc. So at least even if out of 100, 10 uh, go ahead and come ahead and take this up as a serious career I think some uh, positive outcome is uh, achieved, uh, partially at least. Okay, good. So since because of the time constraint, you have to, yes. Uh -huh. uh, we also are in psychology. Uh -huh. We also use experiential learning, wherein uh -huh. we take the students to industries or uh, mental health centers, uh -huh. and we make them to observe certain cases. <laughs> and then they have to come back and write the case which they have observed mm -hmm. and make a presentation in the class and uh, explain how they would have dealt with it mm -hmm. by referring to the books. They have to go and identify what counseling strategies they could have used. Mm -hmm. uh, as I teach counseling psychology paper, mm -hmm. then even in disorders, uh, I was teaching disorders, psychological disorders. Over there, I have given them role plays as uh, Dr. Marshwan said. Mm -hmm. Uh, same way it worked very okay. wonderfully. Okay. Uh, I selected a few students who were very good actors and pre-planned it, mm -hmm. designed the skit and everything and mm -hmm. it worked very well. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have to take much time in teaching topics of schizophrenia and the clinical symptoms and disorders. It was uh, really difficult for them to understand because they are not able to see the patients. Mm -hmm. So here they uh, acted it out with my guidance, I helped them out before they presented. Mm -hmm. So this uh, role play worked well for disorders. Mm -hmm. For counseling therapies, experiential learning worked beautifully. Wonderful, wonderful. Great, Exp any question, one question maybe? I yes. also use it as uh, ISA, second ISA. First ISA is a compulsory test. Uh -huh. Second ISA like we are allowed to give assignments. Uh -huh. So I make them to go to police stations, courts, uh -huh. collect cases, uh -huh. meet the police. Uh -huh. and ask them what type of uh, uh, cases are coming to them, mm -hmm. what type of uh, people are in prison, mm -hmm. closed and open ward and all those things. Mm -hmm. So they get to know, get uh, all the details that come. Mm -hmm. So then I uh, tell them to go to the text and see how you would be able to help these people, what mm -hmm. therapies you would use and then class discussions. Wonderful. So how, did you, how do you evaluate them? Uh, yeah, I uh, will see what therapies they are saying and uh, whether what it's in line with what we are teaching. Like in counseling psychology, we teach them all the therapies. So then are they able to refer exactly 
the cases according to the therapies that are taught to them. So you project the outcomes before and or what happened? Uh, we have explained to them in brief. So once they will go and get the case, they are supposed to do it on their own. And uh, understand that by which therapy would work in which case. So will they get the entire case? Uh, yeah, yes, 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 yes. They, they do. So you have a rubric kind of thing? Uh, yes, meaning they won't give the names, I tell them, don't ask the person's names or the full details, whereabouts. Uh, they uh, normally have gone to police stations, they have gone to, yeah, they give and I tell them not to mention the person's name or uh, any other details. Uh, no, can, 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 no, I excuse me, when you, when you hear the question, can you repeat on your phone what was the question? Ethics, I mean, you need to have a consent form. Uh -huh, yes. Uh, I have not used any consent form because uh, there's no identity. Person's identity, name is not their age, place, nothing. Mm -hmm. No details about the personal history of the person. Okay. So what exactly we have is a, what, symptom, what, is, a, what is the case? Yeah, what is the case? What behavioral techniques we could use and what counseling therapy you could They are getting the entire case without disclosing the name. That has some uh, behavior. Uh, yes, aspect. yes, yes. Mostly all the cases are having behavior problems. Teacher, do you, uh, you compile all this and write a research paper? Uh, I have not gone into that detail yet, sir. So it's a good thing. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Many students have uh, suggested that we are doing a good job then we could have done this, but I don't know whether we can disclose no, identity and all. all other ethics are to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. Very nice. You know, I was in the medical school. I was training the clinicians in the U.S. for a long time. The case-based learning, it's a very big thing. Um, in the U.S. actually, yes, very good. Okay, so quickly from this team. So tell your share, your experience, and uh, any uh, active learning strategies that you have used uh, in your classrooms. Okay, I'm coming from this skill based uh, learning program that is NSKF subject. Uh, I have teached for two years. I have applied role plays. Role plays, okay. okay. The process of role play starts with a, the process of role play starts with a, uh, creating the situation. Uh -huh. First, we have to create the situation like I, am te I was teaching retail management. Mm -hmm. For example, the situation like angry customer. Uh -huh. I have to pick up the student who is getting angry very fast. Okay. <laughs> now, he performs very well at role. And another technique I use is that field management said we were taking the permission and we were, what we used to do is that the one expert mm -hmm. from that institution or the organization, like malls. We used to explain all the process of billings, then uh, identifying the stocks, maintaining the stocks, mm -hmm. all these things. Yes. Great, great. A any questions about the role play and the field visit? How much will this be used in their, for their marks? Yes, this subject is for practical 50% and 50% gain. Basically, it was a compulsion for them to do to this role play and to go for field visits. So it's counted, marks are counted? Yes, marks was counted. It was compensated. So the grade, the grade was associated with the role play. Okay, okay, great. So did I hear from this team, right? So you were talking about think pair share, right? Yeah. So did you, anyone did anything pair share in your classrooms? Yeah, I tried so. Okay, would you please briefly talk about the idea? Actually, my first Can you share the microphone, please? So let me ask, how, how many of you heard about Think Pair Share? No, okay, would you please briefly talk about Think Pair Share? <coughs> Actually, I used to make the groups of, uh, in the classroom. Uh -huh. And uh, one problem, uh, suppose I give them one problem. As my topic is mathematics, uh -huh. uh, so in the group I used to tell them, like, you have to think on this problem. Uh -huh. then, uh, uh, they, are the, uh, they used to sit separately. I, so I used to do it in a small classroom actually. Yeah. I teach an engineering stream. So some classes are big, some classes are small. So in small classroom I tried this. 
they used to think about the problem mm -hmm. and uh, then i used to tell them to uh, like suppose there is a group of uh, six students then first uh, discuss amongst yourself about that problem then pair them mm -hmm. pair them means uh, like two two students so in single group i used to uh, divide them again in uh, three groups mm -hmm. And then whatever outcome uh, they used to tell, mm -hmm. like uh, we used to discuss whatever is wrong and whatever is right, then mm -hmm. uh, another group also used to come mm -hmm. up and uh, discuss about the thing. And my observation uh, was uh, it improved uh, their mathematics skills. Mm -hmm. Like they started thinking in uh, different directions. Mm -hmm. Like it is not like only the classroom teaching one problem is solved, this, 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 mm -hmm. then got the answer. Mm -hmm. But how that problem can be solved in different mm -hmm. ways. Mm -hmm. like suppose I apply this formula, how it will work. Mm -hmm. But one more thing I observed is uh, nowadays students are uh, very much uh, exam oriented. Mm -hmm. Like uh, they <coughs> take part enthusiastically if there are marks for that. Mm -hmm. Like uh, uh, I, uh, I used to do this last uh, semester only. I have done something like uh, like how you apply mathematics in real real life. Mm -hmm. So I I made the groups and I told them. So my the first question came from the class is ma'am there are marks for this. Mm -hmm. So accordingly they decide whether we should uh, actually participate. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that is uh, really a sad part that uh, even if we want to do something extra, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. if it is not marks oriented then. Uh, <laughs> Most of the students, like, there are five percent students that they are interested, but ninety five percent students, my observation uh -huh. is uh, they will not do, uh, take part. Correct, correct, wonderful. Any questions regarding think pair share? To how to you know any questions regarding if you want to implement think, think pair share in your classroom? Do you have any questions to please? What I see that think pair share automatically happens in every classroom uh -huh. without even telling them because you see uh, both of them talking. Uh -huh. So um, what new thing you did because this always happens. You, you ask any question in the class is always a think yes. pair and share. I, yeah, yes, but uh, I meant uh, I uh, divided them in the groups. Actually when we ask the question definitely they move here and there what is the answer, what is the answer. They discuss. But uh, I specially divided in the groups, and in the group only they have to discuss, and I compare their uh, answers, their ideas. Uh, your problem will be solved because now we're going to make it compulsory for activities that all marks will be counted. Yes, that, that will be fine. Any people. Okay. So, a any questions regarding think pair share? Any questions? Yes. Okay. No. So no, please, no, please repeat. Uh, can, can, can you repeat the question, please? Yeah, I think. Uh, yeah. No, no. You can repeat the question. So the question was. So then you. The question try. was. She was asking whether I chose the students according to their academic uh, performances. Uh -huh. uh, it is not like that. I just chose them randomly. So if, if there is, I, am I Yes. Yeah. I think. Yeah. So if there is a pair which somehow does not, you know, count with the result. And repeatedly, if that happens, doesn't that demotivate them? If both are. No, what happens is they tell something, some whatever come, what I tell them is whatever comes in your mind, you have to present. It may be correct, it may be wrong. So they come up with some or the other idea. And then you yes. correct them. Yes. 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 They have to tell their idea. Okay. Okay, so any questions from this table? No, good. Okay, wonderful. So, <laughs> yeah, yes. Yes, please share that. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, you said that uh, you don't have to publish. I don't know. Is that my cone? I don't know. Do the same. Okay. So one question, could you just please introduce yourself? I yeah. think, yes. So, I'm, uh, my name is Shailija Sardasai. Uh, I'm retired, but I've, I've been doing research in educational technology. <coughs> uh, in fact, uh, at the university, in, com in the Department of Computer Science and Technology, I, you know, I was one of the first person to get into this area. Because basically I went there to train teachers, computer teachers from school 
and we used blended learning. Uh -huh. And then we found that we had so much data, you know, 500 teachers whose data was there, so we thought we'd publish papers. And that's when this question of ethics came. Because even as a teacher, say suppose you're doing an experiment, say team learning or whatever it is, and you want to present it, then you need consent mm -hmm. from the participating mm -hmm. students, or mm -hmm. even if your co-teacher runs your experiment, you need uh, ethics uh, permission. Otherwise, it's not possible. You know, the reason they give us is suppose some other teacher conducts the experiment for you and it fails, then it should not be used against the teacher as a failure and all that. So those, so many aspects are there. Uh, and uh, that should not affect. So this ethics business came in. And uh, if you want to publish, particularly in uh, foreign international paper, they're very particular. So I started this whole process of getting an ethics committee done. Mm. I go to so many websites, collect the data, and see what exactly was required, what are the processes. And uh, of course, when I left there, I did hand it over to Ram Rao Vag to you know, put it in the academic committee. But I think now Vandana has uh, taken it forward, and university just now are checking. They have got a lot of uh, things on ethics, you know, mm -hmm. very clearly defined Wonderful. guidelines. <coughs> so I feel you all should use that. Not only for psychology, mm. but as a teacher, if you want to do experiment, you know, try this, whatever strategies you're talking of, and publishing the papers, you will need uh, the actual uh, forms, and they have forms and all which you can mm -hmm. fill. But do go through the university website and use that. That's all I Wonderful. Mean. Thank you for sharing. Actually, um, you know, one of the things that the Tech Society will be doing some of the research design, and usually in the international universities they have institutional review board. You know, before you do any kind of research, you need to get the IRB institutional review board approval. So it's a lot of process, but it's good. You will be safe. The participants will be also safeguarded. So very nice to hear about those uh, you know initiatives from the Goa Higher Education. Okay, so please uh, you know stop me when the tea break or anything you know. Since sometimes you know I, today I just want to have this conversation. Uh, level, but please stop me when if they want to go for a tea break or anything that time. Okay, please do a check with that part. Um, so, um, so we were discussing about mainly. I think we heard about discussion approach, then role play, again uh, participatory learning, case-based learning, role play again from this team, then think pair share, right? So if you Google it, active learning strategies, you will find at least 10 or 15 active learning strategies. Okay, different types of active learning strategies that you can find. And sometimes we don't have the time <laughs> to use all these different types of active learning. Sometimes it also depends upon the subject, subject as well. So, um, so in my experience, um, I just want to share. I think think pair share. It's a good strategy, very easy to implement. Okay, and another one is the um, peer instruction, peer learning, peer learning, peer instruction. Have you heard about the peer instruction? Similar to um, think pair share, but it's little peer instruction because you don't instruct the students, but the peers, so they will instruct. So then the another, another strategy is the team-based learning. Uh, so the team-based learning has a lot of research, and uh, actually uh, the university that I was part of, um, the College of Medicine, uh, they changed the entire curriculum into team-based learning. Okay, so we'll be discussing that one a little bit more um, later, you know, all in this coming next five, four, five days. So, so these are the two important things, three maybe active learning strategies that you can use. Think, pair, share, peer instruction, and the team-based learning. Okay, so now you have a general idea 
about what is active learning strategies, how to implement. And I think maybe uh, maybe the Department of Higher Education or you know, when the tech society might be doing some kind of a frequently asked questions about some of the uh, active learning strategies, so we might put as a resources later. Now, what is an active learning strategies, right? Right? So you, as an instructor, I think we were hearing less talk, right, from the instructor. So last one hour, I didn't talk too much. I think you were teaching each other. So that's one of the strategies that we'll be using. OK, so now, if you can just go to the Google uh, Classroom, you should see a question. Uh, it's called? Individual readiness assurance test. If you do see that uh, assigned there in your Google Classroom, please go ahead and take that test. Do you see that one? No? Refresh. It's came now? OK, great. So please go ahead and. Uh, Take that. Uh, it's an individual, no discussion. Uh, so you just take that uh, test individually. So you will be taking that test individually, no discussion, OK? But you can help someone else to get into the question. OK, let me see how many of you have completed. responses. OK, responses, only three responses. <coughs> OK, seven responses. I need at least 25. OK. That's fine, yes. Since you know, when you do, you can put that. I did not say in the score, yes, for this one, yes. <clears throat> but you are not seeing the correct answer, right? Do you see the correct answer? No, no? okay, that's good. <laughs> so, okay, just take maybe another two minutes. Okay, 25, maybe I will wait one more minute. So, just go ahead and submit. OK, so the session two, uh, we are going to talk about introduction to team-based learning. OK, so today we will be just going much deeper into the introduction to the team-based learning. So next um, three days, so tomorrow we will focus on how you design a team-based TBL module, OK? Right? So then. On Wednesday, we will focus on how, what is the assessment? How do you create the assessment questions? Then on Friday, uh, we will talk about facilitation skill. How do you facilitate a TBL session? Then the last day, how do you do the peer assessment, peer, peer evaluation? So these were the four topics we'll be going. So today, we will just to focus on the, just the basic foundational knowledge about the team-based learning. And um, so these are the kind of the objectives uh, for the session, OK? So describe the team formation. I think probably you kind of got an experience. How do you really form the team? Then we will look into the readiness assurance process. What is that? And then we will also look at how do we use the problem for us problem solving framework. Then essential elements of team-based learning. What are the next steps to learn more about team-based learning? So that the last objective which kind of goes on throughout this week. OK? So today, the whole day, we will be spending on uh, this uh, uh, one, actually. Um, OK. So uh, 
So I think I got your individual responses, okay, in your uh, Google form. So now, probably you have uh, got a cards, like, um, so use those cards, okay, put it in your table like this, like this, okay, I'm just listen to the instruction. So, so then you will take the same test as a team, okay. So you took the individual readiness assurance test, right? It's called IRAT. Now you are going to take the same test. It's called TRAT, Team Readiness Assurance Test. OK? So you individually did the questions. Now you are going to discuss each questions and come to a conclusion what would be the best answer. Then when I say count, one, two, three, so you will select your team answer choice on the table on top, simultaneously. Is that clear? Right? Each question, you will discuss. You have to come up as a team, as a decision. And I was hearing earlier, it's not a majority rule. <laughs> Okay, so what will happen in the majority rule? Let's say if there are in your team, so those who didn't read the pre-reading material, three of them they didn't read, two only two person read the material. Then three, four of them, three of them saying, okay, A is the answer, only two of them read the material and say, no, B is the answer. Will that win? Will they get the points? No. You got the point. So here it's not the majority rule, actually. So who read the material and then asking the why question. If one person say A is the answer, you will ask the question, why do you think A is the answer? You cannot just guess it, no. Because what will happen, it's grade associated, right? Only the first time, the students will leave their point. But next time, they will say no. They will ask the question, give the reference facts. I think your team was discussing about, you know, give us the facts. Whenever you state something, you need to give us the facts. Is that clear now? Good? OK. So let's take the first question and take maybe two minutes, discuss as a team what is the correct answer, uh, and then come up with the answer choice. Then only put the card on the table whatever the answer choice that you select. Okay, don't put all the tape cards like that. So just put it down. So only the answer, when I say count one, two, three, put that card on the table. Got it? So now just to put it everything on down. So you, you can also. So I will put the question here, okay? So this was the first question, right? Okay. And also, it's not time to reference. Huh? Not scratch, don't scratch, don't do it. Please, don't scratch now. So you come up as a team, and uh, so when I say, Put your card on the table, then put the card on the table. Don't put the card on the table. Sorry, I, my instruction was not clear. OK. So if all the team got the conclusion, <coughs> No, no, right now you cannot use the material actually. So did I said it clearly? So you cannot use the material now. I will give in the application activity, it's an open book. So that's coming in the afternoon, okay? So it's just a readiness assurance to want to make sure you read the material 
okay and it's just a foundational knowledge you know it's not an application level question just to making sure that you have read the material or the watched the videos that's that's it ready everyone all team are ready okay so i'm going to do a trial one okay so when i count 1 2 3 you can put your table okay so let's do a trial one you can do whatever the card now so but the second time that's the final one okay okay we are going to do a trial one ready i'm going to count 1 2 3 okay so let me ask this question is this your final answer no okay right good okay so put it down put it down <coughs> ready this is your final answer as a team you come to as a team you come to this answer choice okay ready 1 2 3 wow so all the teams got c as the answer choice okay okay let me ask this question so why is the simultaneous reporting it's important right if i say sequential order three of them would c and the other team oh they all three put the c okay let me also put c right so but now you cannot change the answer now you need to defend your answer choice why you selected as a team the why question you know i always told you in team based learning the why question it's very important okay uh so I forgot the name River. Okay, I'm going to call the team name River. Okay, okay. So tell me, uh, why did you select C as your answer? What was your thinking process when you selected C as the answer choice? So, so that is the base of the active learning because we have to use the content to solve the problem. Application has to be more than just gaining the information and keeping it to ourselves. So. application active learning is all about the applying to solve the problems and make coming to a final decision there was the output of that concept like that for that reason we have used the answer set okay so does any other team has any disagreement or anything added to that team's point any other teams do you have any disagreement i think probably everyone it see it's a agreement but anything to add no so everyone kind of perfect answer very good okay the students will be interested uh -huh. if we uh, give them something that is of relevance uh -huh. that is something that is that can be applied uh -huh. okay they will gain more more interest in you know putting in their resources mm -hmm. and hence Uh, solve problems and make decisions mm. wonderful okay so let me come to team synergy so what was your second best option how we had any second best option have we had any discussion about c or b or d have b okay a a b to a and c in between so you were second best option was a okay first option was c so you selected c uh, so a so what was your thinking process that uh, making that you know selecting c uh, a as the second best option please please use the mic and uh, <coughs> can we oh sorry can, can you say Grasp uh, what is the content, uh -huh. the theory, uh -huh. and then apply it uh -huh. uh, in the activities of class based. Okay, so that's the reason you thought A would be the another option. Okay, so uh, so what was your second best option in your? Have you had any? We didn't have a second. You didn't have any. Everyone said C is the answer. 
Okay, so let me ask team Kannan. Oh, Kanna. Kan okay, so tell me, uh, have you had any second best option? No, unanimous. It was C as a unanimous answer. Okay, good. What about your team? There was no second best option. No thoughts. Okay. So you had B. Because in our units scenario, we spend a lot of time doing that in the team. Uh huh. Copy pasting. A lot of you know, a lot of time goes. Resources are not available. So if you're talking about time. Uh huh. At least we spend a lot of time because we want to see the output. Ah. The codes take the maximum time. So we think less, we read less, but we spend more time on the, how the output should look. Mm. It's colorful and a lot of matter. Mm -hmm. Then Xeroxing for one another. Okay. So, okay. So, okay. So working on teams, writing assignments and reports. So that was the thought process. That might be a second. Best option. Okay. I don't know the answer yet. So now you can scratch. There is a scratch card, right? So try a, pen, a coin or a key or anything just to try to scratch whether whatever the point that you selected. So if the answer is correct, you will see a star. So did you find the answer? Did you get a star? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Got it, still, so you found a star? Okay, good, good, good. You got it? Okay, so, wonderful, so I think the answer is, C is the correct answer, so I I'm not going to spend too much time on that one. So let's go to the second question. <laughs> okay. So question number two, in TBL, instructor conclude the readiness assurance process with A, appeal process, peer evaluation, mini lecture, or significant problem. Don't look at the uh, handout, just to discuss as a team. Okay, then come up with the answer. So some of you are test wise students, right? <laughs> Looking at different options, which one would be the best? Okay. So everyone, do we need a little more time? One more minute? No, no good? Every team is good? Yes. Very good, very good. So I'm going to count one, two, three. So when I count three, just put your answer choice on the table, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Put your answer choice on the table. A, C, 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 C. Okay, good. Very nice. So, wonderful. Um, okay, so tell me your thinking process, selecting C as the answer choice. Yes. Yeah. <coughs> Please use the mic if you can. Yeah. Problem. Problem has already been taken up in the first stage. Okay. Thank you. Just control with a small lecture or mini lecture. Mm-hmm. You selected. To okay, okay. We, we Okay, please, yes. No, I'm just saying we wind up the whole process. Uh -huh. Tell them where, what, how we went ahead, what went wrong. Uh -huh. So we give them some more insight on the topics. Uh -huh. so make sure that they are all right with it. Uh -huh. so that we, before we, because they already solved the problem. Mm -hmm. We have given them something to discuss about. Okay, them. okay. So we stress on the word conclude. Uh -huh. Lecture, instead of conclude the lecture. So uh -huh. Always with the, you know, so uh -huh. Okay, okay, good, good, okay, good. So you also selected uh, C as, okay, do you have anything to add? It's like a recap. Okay, can we share the 
Mike, yeah. It's like a recap. Okay. We have already done. Uh huh. <laughs> so it was a recap? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh, to summarize, uh -huh. what has been done. Okay. The problem has been solved. So now the problem has been solved. Uh -huh. So you're looking at how do you summarize the whole lecture within you know, a short span of time? Okay. Just a concluding remark to its end in the form of a minute. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Yeah. Well, team Karna, so it's your opportunity to defend your answer. <laughs> you know, sometimes the whole majority, you see here in the team-based learning, the majority, it's not the problem, you know, thing. In the minority might be convinced the whole the other class. Yes, please. But the star matters <laughs> in the end. The star matters in the end, yes. Um, we went up. All of us actually agreed to it as one. Okay. Secondly, we thought uh, that uh, the I rat and the T rat is what we just did. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And after that, it naturally followed with uh, the appeal process. Uh -huh. That we had to justify your choice. Uh -huh. I think that is our justification. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, any disagreement? With their uh, okay, so team. So, is there any any disagreement with the with the with the answer? I gave the justification in the natural process, you know. Uh, so, appeal process might be the conclusion, and uh, in the readiness assurance process. So, that's they selected. The best decision was A than C. <coughs> Yes. Do, do you have any disagreement? In the pure evaluation itself, the appeal process can be completed. Peer evaluation itself, appeal process can be completed. Justification may be over itself, and then mini lecture could be the last part. Okay. So do, do you agree? You are not giving answer to this team. So do you agree with their? I say, agree. The mini lecture is. We agree. The mini lecture is the last part. Appeal process comes in the beginning. You appeal in the beginning. Uh -huh. Okay, and you conclude with a, you know, recap. As Madam said, a recap. Uh -huh. Okay, so appeal always. Whenever we do something, we appeal in the beginning. Okay. So the, definitely, it will not go with the conclude word. Okay. Okay. That's the logic. Okay, logic behind. Yes, madam. Uh, over here, I would say that appeal will be the second, sir, with a significant problem. The problem which. Is there the students they are facing or there a real life problem? Then they will put for or against for that. That is their appeal, sir. Evaluation and then comes the mini lecture. Okay. Okay. So readiness. Uh, readiness. No, we are just testing the readiness of the how prepared, how ready we are. So according to me, appeal comes. So okay. Good. Good discussion. Anything to add? So have you had any second best option? So the A was your in unanimous decision? The mini lecture. Mini lecture was coming second? Yes, but again, it comes. OK, so you thought, logically, you thought appeal process would be the uh, best option, right? Good. Anything to add to that team? Any? Actually, uh, the pro thinking is correct, but generally, appeal is the last one we have. But in this process, probably, the lecture, as the lecture is summarized. Mm. Okay, so, okay, great. So, okay, so now you can scratch the card now, so you can find the star. So did you find the star? Yeah. I have one question. Yes, yes, ma'am. This team. Uh -huh. uh, how did six minds think the same A? We did not think. No, we did not. But finally, we agreed on So, so influence. Who's the influencer from your? No. 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 <laughs> I don't think there is. The big team TBL. I was just thinking uh, that one person can influence the others. Mm -hmm. So I was looking at who is that influencer? <laughs> how they all six thought the same. <laughs> Okay, so did you find the answer? 
No. Star. star, okay. Okay, so that's good. So I will come to that one. Okay, so we will come to that one. So let's go to the next one. Uh, so next question, what is the last step in the TBL rhythm or cycle? <laughs> Okay, so did you come to a conclusion? Yes. Do you need one more minute? No, good? All the teams good? Thought process, thinking going on, discussion, okay. So I'm going to count. Ready? One, two, three. Put your card on the table. Very good, very good, okay. So B, C, 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 okay. So team B, it's your chance to convince all these teams why B is your answer choice. Actually, in the individual, I have put uh, D. Uh -huh. But uh, when I read it now, as usual, how students get confused in our true and false, uh -huh. I thought it is D because you talk about the cycle, and the cycle starts with an out of uh, class preparation, mm. and <coughs> it ends with mini lecture, but then the cycle starts again which is the last which we should do, is the out-of-class preparation. So we have put P over here because of that reason, but personally, I had put D. You had put D. I had put D. In your individual. I had put D, thinking it's the mini lecture, uh -huh. as the last. But if you talk about the cycle, then it comes as the out-of-class, because then it comes the next story of out-of-class today and proceed the whole cycle again. Uh -huh. So... That's why we have put that. Okay. The best option is C. No, D. <laughs> Second best is C. Second best. Okay. So, so did you hear their uh, rational or justification? So let me ask: Do you disagree with them? Do you think uh, uh, so? B is the correct answer. So how do you convince them? Or you know, what's your thought process behind selecting C as the answer choice? So the reason behind choosing uh, choice C, <coughs> that is application activity, when we go to attend some workshop or mm -hmm. some course, uh, towards the end of uh, the course, uh, we usually do some applicative type activity mm -hmm. so that uh, we can apply all those things which we have learned in that course. Uh -huh. And that's why we chose application activity. Okay, so I should have put reflection and evaluation, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Team B, have you got convinced to change your decision from B to C from these uh, arguments? Their argument is based on our regular uh, process, but here we are doing team building activity. Okay. So we are doing some uh, ours is a different, we are starting a new process, so we can't use the same logic what they are saying. What we are already doing is application activity, but that is not what we are doing in the new system, what we are learning. So that's what I don't think that we should change. I don't know. So they are not still not convinced. Um, with B, is there still they say that, you know, uh, uh, out of class preparation is the last s cycle in the uh, TBL rhythm. Anything to add to convince them? Um, Bloom's level of learning is when you look at the last level you're trying to create. Uh -huh. Third level is apply. So uh -huh. application in that sense also is because you're doing an application based activity. So uh -huh. that is the reason why we thought of application. Okay. So another uh, reason it's application, you know, the Bloom's taxonomy. Okay. So love. Now let's take time to find the star. <coughs> Got, got the, did you find the star? Yes. Yes, okay, okay. So the last question, it is important to create the teams that are, <coughs> uh, so just select maybe one minute to find the answer for this question as a team. So we have uh, actually 
three options. The first, ah. the majority is <coughs> for C, and uh, that is also the uh, second option of the other participants. Uh -huh. uh, if we to negate the others, uh, it's not selected by students because uh, students will then you know, group themselves the way they wish to, uh -huh. and some students might be left out. Uh -huh. Uh, diverse is correct, but uh, if the instructor gets select, there might be bias again. Uh -huh. So B is also out. Uh, group with similar abilities, then again, uh, you know, as uh, Sir talked about multiple intelligence, then uh -huh. again that's going to be a problem. Uh -huh. And hence uh, it's C. C. Okay. So uh, okay. So how do you? What's your thought process of behind selecting B as the answer? Uh, my, my query to him was, what is the meaning of full is or no way? As in everyone is to contribute to the. To that group. Can voice out, can voice out. Yeah. I mean, no one should sit, you know, quietly without participating. Everyone should participate yeah, actively. Participate. Yeah. That the way the yeah, we're doing that now. Okay. Okay. Please, I think there is a comment. So please go ahead. So, so what we thought was actually, as so said, like that was our thought process as well. Uh, but then when we uh, selected the uh, point B, diverse uh, instructor selected, our thought process was like, first that came to our mind was your today's activity. <laughs> 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 uh, yes. So that was one key point which was in our mind. And then again, uh, we were also discussing a point that an uh, instructor basically knows their student. Mm -hmm. And uh, it is important to have a diverse group, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, if we le uh, leave it, as so I was trying to say, if we leave it to students, then they will select their own groups, which might be productive or which may not be. Mm -hmm. So what we thought was the B is, B is the best one. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Thank you. So any thoughts, anything to add? You are selection as B as the answer? Yeah. Anything to add? We agree. So you agreed? Now you are thinking of changing to? They said B, right? We also B. B. We also were B. So, you are, so what was the different group? Oh, C was the group. Oh, OK. So agreed. OK. So do you convinced with their thoughts? No, still you think B, uh, sorry, C, it should be the small enough, yeah. everyone. OK. Yes, yes, madam. Do, do you have a thought point? Ah. Diversity also means inclusiveness. Uh -huh. yeah. no, but there are two parts to it. Diversity is correct. And instructor but instructor selected always has an element of bias. Not all instructors are necessarily biased. Not always, but small. Yeah, necessarily. But that small group can also be instructed. Made, no? no, that's what we this is. We can make a small idea. No, uh, <coughs> four options. No, Third small option. enough that everyone must pull <coughs> his weight out. Yes. That small group the instructor might have made. Might have made, but then look, Again, uh, when you look at the four options. Okay, so let's let's hear. Uh, okay. So can can we share the screen? Uh, microphone? Okay. Uh, when we when we. Uh, Look at uh, you know uh, negating the option. We have to look at what is possible under all circumstances and what is uh, uh, not possible under all circumstances. So uh, when you look at now, for, for example, ma'am said uh, it is possible that the C group, the C option, might have been made by the instructor. Mm -hmm. It is possible, but then we are not looking at that. We are looking at the information that is given to us. Uh -huh. And in that, what we are saying is small enough that everyone must pull his weight. That is an important element of uh, you know team-based learning. We call it a team. That means everyone has to pull his weight. If half of them or one of them does not, then that group does not really function as a group. It is uh, then monopolized by people who are maybe who talk more or maybe who are you know more aggressive or so on and so forth. Okay. Any, yes. Please. Okay. Eight minute. Because earlier one says to like select, you said no. Yeah. Second one said you says no. How is the group made finally if it is small enough? I agree to that. So. Uh, okay. Uh, I think uh, ma'am said that she saw what sir did in the morning. And so it was not actually selected by sir. He gave a mechanism. Now it could be also maybe through checks. It could be through checks also. Uh, there was no bias. Now it could be through checks. You know, I mean, uh, one so let, let's spend, okay. <laughs> uh, one second, okay. So I'm going to do a <laughs> norms, okay. Another, the, the whole, you know, this is good. I like this discussion. So this is the core of team based learning. I mean, what we are talking about is uh, selected. But selected, yes. not diverse. No, no, diverse. there are two parts to it. So there are two parts to it diverse and, uh, diverse and selected. We have no objection to diverse. 
But when it is selected, it means it's one person taking a decision. No, no, but yeah, but the selection is third point. How is it team made then? You so as I told, it could, we could have maybe you know had un, uh, names and fifth chips. Okay. There are 31 of us. You know, you pick out uh, five chips, make make one group. That's the first five, second five, third five. Right? Okay. That could be one way. Or as with numbers, you pick up whatever number, you know, if only five numbers could have been put in that pool. So I think the lens is ready, number, right? L lens is ready, <laughs> <laughs> the side is kind of strong. But then there is no selection. No, but I come with that procedure. Yeah. I come that it is chit based. Mm -hmm. I pick the chit. Yes. Won't you call it instructor selection? No, you are not an instructor. It could be anyone. You can ask the, the participants but themselves to come and select. Yeah, select. So so each, if there are 31 participants. It's the same thing. Instead of picking the chit, he asked you to say number. But when it's selected, it means I use my judgment to choose. Okay, okay, great, great. So when, when I say okay, so please stop. So one comment to add, please share the mic. Yes. I think I'm audible enough to yeah. So I just want to add something to it. What ah. I understood it is. Uh -huh. uh, first of all, we wanted the time. Uh -huh. Time to keep in mind, right? Like suppose you want to implement this in a class. Mm -hmm. And you tell, yeah. and you tell the students to select. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. So what I understood from diverse and instructors lecture was you design some methods where you're not biased. Mm -hmm. Correct? So like for example, today just giving numbers randomly and uh, and I think you try to keep uh, 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 teachers from same fields together to avoid to make it di uh, to make it diverse. Mm -hmm. So the numbering when you give so you as a teacher would already know what you expected mm -hmm. and how you would go about mm -hmm. dividing the team where you would include everyone and mm -hmm. yet not be biased. Okay, great, wonderful. It's one o'clock, time for lunch. Okay, <laughs> great. So just take quick minutes to find the answer choice. <laughs>